Hi guys and welcome to the first instructional video that we've set up to show how to set up Voice Meter Banana for streamers. I've helped quite a lot of people over the period of time so we're just looking to, to actually run through a video and uh, make it a bit easier to, to follow. So we'll just take it from the, the beginning just to give you a rough idea of what Voice Meter Banana is. It's a mixing desk for your PC essentially. So first things first we're going to assume that you've done absolutely nothing at this point. First things that we want to do is go to the Voice Me to Banana website. When you're in here, there are a couple of things that you want to, to download. There are two versions of Voice Meter. There's standard Voice Meter here. As you can see, it's got a couple of inputs and a couple of outputs. We don't want that. That's not, it's not what we're looking to, to use just now. So make sure that you select Voice Meter Banana. You can see it's a slightly more complex screen gives us a lot more options as to, to what we're going to do and, um, and it gives us more, more variety and control. So you just want to scroll down the page here, keep on scrolling until we get to the, the download section. You want to download Voice Meter to the whole zip package, keep it nice and easy for yourself. Now this is a donationware piece of software, a fantastic piece of software. They do recommend or they have recommended donations here that you can you can make. What they, they ask is that you, you use it and you see if it's something that's for you. If it's for you then make sure to, to get in the donation for that as well. Now while we're on the page to do the downloads for Voice Me to Banana what we also want to do is to download the virtual audio cable. Now I'll go into a further video regarding the virtual audio cable at a, a later date but you just want to make sure and grab this just now so just make sure to, to download that as well. So once we have that, this is a, the, the first step, we download this and uh, we want to extract and then install the software. So you'll end up with a, a zip file here, voice me to set up. You want to extract it to this location and then you want to run the actual application. Once it's installed, I can't remember if it asks you to, um, to restart your PC but whether it does or not, you want to restart your PC. So what now? The PC is just restarted. What do we do from here? Now this is the point where if you're running through this with somebody and they're speaking to you through the Discord or if they're speaking to you through another program, this is where it falls apart because you lose access to your microphone and you lose access to your headsets for a brief period of time while we're setting this up. First things first, you want to go to the volume meter on your PC. You want to right click on it and open up playback devices so you see this screen. When you see this screen it will show you all the devices that you can use for playback through Windows. Now what you want to do is make sure and select either voice meter auxiliary or just the, the voice meter vial as your main and default device. So what you want to do is click on the one you want, click set default and that's your happy. Now at this point you also want to make sure and go into the properties section you want to go to your levels, make sure the levels here are 100%. You want to go into advanced and this is where your, your default format, you've got various formats in here now, DVD quality, 16 bit, 48,000 hertz is generally fine. Just make sure that you change everything to 48,000. So that's your, your microphone for your inputs and for your recording devices and all your playback devices. Just make sure that everywhere across the board is set to 48,000. So you do that, apply it, click OK. And that's as we come out of, of this section. Again, go into recording section, your default microphone. You just want to click the, the properties. You want to make sure again that the uh, this has got the same two channel, 16 bit, 48,000 hertz DVD quality. Okay, so that's as we've now, we've now set everything all your PC sounds to instead of coming out your speakers, they are now written directly to come into the um, into the voice meter banana itself. So you, as I say, you will lose access to everything. Essentially what happens here, you're now instead of feeding your desktop volume to your PC speakers, you're feeding all of that information into your, uh, your mixing desk, into a channel within your mixing desk. And when you do that, you have to set up your mixing desk to output the volume to your speakers or to your headphones, things like that. So that you will lose access to everything at this point. Don't worry about that. It will come back and it will come back very soon. And now 
what we want to do is open up Voice Me to Banana. I do have a caveat here. If you're a streamer and if you use the Elgato software, the Elgato hardware, you might have installed, they have the, the Game Capture HD program that gets installed, but they also have a Sound Capture program that gets installed at the same time. If you have this installed, you must uninstall it. For some reason, this will override your default device. You will not be able to change your default device in your playback devices. When you come in here, no matter how many times you set something else to be a default device, it will always revert to being the Elgato Sound Capture program. So you just want to remove that from your system entirely. There's no need for you to have that at any point given this process. So that caveat aside, we can now open up Voice Me to Banana and we can have a wee look. So when we open it up, this is the first screen we will see. Now I'm actually using this at the moment to, to do the recording that we're hearing just now. So things are, are set up. You can see various mixing levels are going. Just going to run through the, uh, the initial setup and then we can change things as we go and see the, uh, the effect that this has. So the first thing you want to do in your hardware input section here, you want to input your microphone. So to do that, you just click where it says microphone, IDT, high to definition. That's something I've already selected. It would normally just say select input device. So in here, you choose your standard microphone. Now this might say a USB microphone, or if you have your microphone connected to a mixing desk, a modern that has specific mixer that then feeds into your computer. So you get things like the, um, the Focusrite device. It would probably show on this list, or it would show on this list as a, an individual device. For me, my mixer plugs into just a stereo input. So it's just the, uh, this is the codec that's on the card, the sound card for that port. So there are various formats here. You see there's WDM, there's KS, there's MME. There's also the ASIO, the ASIO, which stands for Audio Stream Input and Output. The ASIO is the, the lowest latency, highest quality input that you can get. It's not always going to be on your system. If it's not on your system, use WDM wherever possible because that's the that's the next best um, for the, the input latency. Some USB microphones will only allow you to use MME, in which case use that, that's fine. If you had to use that, use that. But try and avoid it where possible and use WDM. Ask you first if you have it and WDM if you don't. So you select the microphone and you can see as I speak, my volume bar here goes up and down. You can see that it's um, that if I speak really, really loud, I can get it to clip. If I don't speak that loudly, you can see it's it's coming down, 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 down. Now, just to go over the um, the settings here, we have the comp. This is basically the difference between the quietest voice that you can do and the loudest voice that you can do. So if I whisper very, very quiet with the comp really low, it's very loud. But if I speak into the microphone, it is really loud. If we turn, turn the comp up, the higher we go. This is me whispering now and it's very, very loud. But equally, this is me shouting and it's not as loud. The problem is the higher the comp goes, the more background noise you naturally pick up. So you'll find a happy medium there. Generally, I set about one from a comp, but that's something you can affect. And it just records some videos, play things back and see where you're comfortable with. The gate meter, this is um, this is where it, it nullifies any noise underneath a certain point. So if you go, if you take this right off, which it will default off, you'll be able to hear a hiss from my computer. Any background noise, every noise that the microphone's capable of picking up, it will pick up. If you have a really sensitive microphone, like a, a Blue Yeti, the lower this is, you, you'll be picking up everything. You'll be picking up noise in the next room, noise down the street. It is. It, it depends on your microphone, um, just how bad this is, is going to be. So I find the gate for me, about four, seems to work quite well. It cuts out all the background noise on my computer, cuts out any hiss, slow down, and it just it, it works well. If you go too high with your gate, unfortunately you'll start to clip out your, your own voice and you'll have to speak louder and louder and louder and louder so you get picked up. So you want to stay at whatever level works for you. Underneath these, underneath the comp and the gate, we've got the volume slider. So you can see it's sitting at zero decibels just now. We can decrease that. If we don't want to speak as loudly, we can we can knock that down. If we want to put some more 
noise out, we can raise that up. Now, you want to be careful when you're raising the volume here. If you raise the volume too high, it's going to distort. It's good. Because this is just an artificial volume increase, it's not it's not as clean as just increasing the the electrical supply to a microphone, for instance. It's all done within the computer, so there's more opportunity for it to clip and to, to give it just a, a, a worse signal coming from the, uh, the microphone. So you need to be careful with that. Any of these settings you never want to do too much with. You want to just find a, a comfy middle ground um, between affecting the, the noise input and, uh, and having a detrimental effect. We've got um, these A1, A2, A3, B1, B2 and down the side. Now I'll go into a bit more depth and show you some examples of what happens with this. But these are basically where we send this input. So this hardware input one section, this is where we send that to within the rest of the program. So if I click, you can see down in section B2 here, I've got a B2 highlighted over on the left hand section and you can see the voice coming through into B2. Now this is where I feed out to OBS I'm recording the video through. Uh, it's also where I do my, my streaming. If I use XSplit, it's the same system. It comes through this, this source here. So if I click this and continue speaking, you won't be able to hear me, but you'll still be able to see my volume bar going up and down. And you'll see that the volume drops out from section B2. So I'll just do that just now, just as an example. And if I put that back on, you can see when I continue to speak, it comes back through and outputs some B2. So that's that's what these, these buttons do, and they're just an on-off click, um, depending on where you want the output to go. Underneath that, we have mono, solo, and mute. So mono, some microphones will only produce um, in one of your stereo channels, generally your, your left stereo channel. If that's the case, you want to click mono, and it'll just duplicate the noise on the stereo, and it'll keep, the, um, it'll keep you coming through in both ears. That's fine for the for the mic. For games, things like that, you don't want to, to mess too much with the stereo going to mono, otherwise you're going to lose the, the, the panorama. So again, it's just a click on and off. Solo. Solo is something I never use, but if you were wanting to only broadcast your voice and you had inputs coming from multiple sources here, you could just click solo and it would isolate just this input here. And all you would hear is what's coming through on this channel just now. Mute is fairly self-explanatory. If you click mute, I'll just show you just now, I'll count to 10, 1, 2, 9, 10. So I counted up to 10 there, click mute and you lost my voice. So you lose you lose this hardware input if you choose mute. So that, that's us, that's covered off our input of the microphone. We can rename this if we want, we can change that to, oh, change that to, to mic. And that's us, we're happy there. We can see that the voice is going up and down. We've set our compensation, we've set our gate. We know where we're outputting to, we're outputting at the moment to, to what's going to be our input in OBS. We're happy. Everything is uh, is working there as expected. Now the only problem, I cannot hear myself in my, uh, in my ears. This is where we move to the hardware out section up here. And again, this is this is something we'll need to, to run through um, it's fairly self-explanatory, but you just need to make sure and set things up the way that, that it's comfortable for you. So A1 must always be your primary output device. So whatever you listen to, if you listen to desk speakers, if you have the volume come through a headset, if you have the, the volume going through to desktop speakers, you want to make sure and set them as your primary device. Again, if your headset is a USB headset, it will be up on this list as a, a specific device. If it's just like me, just plugged into a port on your PC, then again, you just want to make sure and find whichever port it is that you, uh, you use. So this setting will be whatever was previously selected as the default within the, the Windows volume slider here. So previously I had the IDT, High Definition Audio Codec selected. So here I just want to make sure I've got the IDT, High Definition Audio Codec selected as my primary output. And what this does, this A1 assigns this output here to A1. If we want to send the source, so if I want to listen to myself feeding back from my microphone, I just click the A1 button and you'll be able to see the A1 slider moving up and down. 
there we go. So I can now hear myself within my ear. If I, if I want to turn my volume down within my ears without affecting what goes to OBS, I can turn the volume down here. So I'm very quiet just now in my ears. And you can see that the difference in the volume, but it's still nice and loud that's going out to, to OBS. If I want to be nice and loud again, then again, I just double click that, push it back up to zero decibels, and that's as happy. So this is how you affect, if you've got multiple speakers, you would select A2, Let me, maybe you've got desktop speakers as well that you want, so you would choose whatever the outputs are, maybe you've got a monitor that you use as well, so again you would just choose whatever you want as your hardware outputs, that's the, the, the physical devices that are producing sound for you. The other two things that we have in this section are the B1 and the B2 outputs, now these are your, your virtual audio outputs, so where we have the virtual inputs here, we've got the virtual outputs there. These are very important um, for the, the, the system. Voice meter VIO ties up with the virtual input here. Voice meter auxiliary ties up with the, the auxiliary here. So that's our initial microphone input covered off. That's our hardware output covered off. We know we want this to be our primary one. The, the reason that we want A1 to be our primary listening device, it is it produces the lowest um, latency, gives us the best quality, and the, the resources go to A1 above anything else. So you want to make sure that that's whatever you listen to as your primary device, that that's exactly what you, you pick up here. Generally speaking, you won't just have your voice coming through on the, the system. So you'll also have you'll also have music that's being played, or you'll have the, the game volume and various other things. As we've been doing this video, I've had some music paused from open mic, but now you can see I've unpaused the music and you can see that the volume is there on the system ready to be listened to. So if I want to listen to that music without sending it to the stream, I click A1 and you can see suddenly this is going up into my ears and this is quite loud. So I'll just knock the volume down within my ears. So that's at a nice quiet level for me. But if I want to pass that volume out to the uh, to the stream, or if I want to pass it out to the video that I'm recording just now, I need to select to the B2, I need to send the B2. So you can see the volume there. I'll click this, it'll come in very loud, so we will knock this down. There we go, so that says my ears are picking up here, and the stream or the output here is picking up here. Now I know this is going to be loud compared to me, so I'm just going to dial that back. Generally speaking, every three decibels halves the volume that you're, you're hearing there. So you see this just tails down what's actually coming in from either your game or the uh, any any sounds that you've you've got in the system, and you can increase or decrease the individual volumes. So it's a wee bit quiet in my ears now, so I'll just increase that now, and that's a good level for me. And that is essentially the basic setup for, for Voice Meter Banana. Now, something that I like to do, because this is my main desktop sound, I like to make sure that I'd label that as desktop, so you can label any of these things what you want, and you can set them up for various um, various um, channels and various systems. We'll go into that a wee bit more in depth later on as, uh, as time goes on, but I think just now we'll leave it at that point and I'll pick up another video and show you what we want to do from there. So, thanks for your time today, and we'll catch up with you soon. Take care. Hi guys, so we want to take what we've just used and set up on Vice, Vice Meet Banana, and we want to insert that into our streaming broadcast software. So I use OBS, um, it's a fairly similar setup, in XSplit, I can show you that later. But what we want to do is ensure that our outputs that are coming from Voice Meter Banana, I've got them set to, to here, to the B2. We want to ensure that they are inserted into our broadcast software, so either OBS or XSplit. What we want to do, in OBS, you've got your settings here, or you can go to your file and settings up here. And this will pull up the settings window that we have here. Funnily enough, we want to go into audio and in here, your mic or auxiliary audio device. This is what you want to have set up as the output from Voice Meter Banana. So if 
if you have your everything passing to B1, if you have your voice passing to B1 as well, then it would be the voice meter output. But because I've got everything going to B2, oh, sorry, because I've got everything going to B2, that's the auxiliary output. So we want to ensure that in OBS, we have it as the auxiliary output. You don't want to get into the situation of having your microphone as an input here as well, or having your microphone as an input here. You want to have nothing else. Essentially what you want to do is remove everything from being directly into OBS, and you just want to have it going directly into VoiceMeter Banana, and using VoiceMeter Banana to send one output, mixing of all these various inputs to OBS or to your, your streaming software. Again, your sample rate, you want 48 kilohertz. This is what I was saying earlier. You want to make sure that everything's at 48, not some of it 44 and some of it 48. If you have anything set at 44.1 kilohertz and other things set to 48 kilohertz, there is the potential for it to cause some um, audio degradation. So you just want to make sure that it is as clean as possible and everything across the board is set at 48 kilohertz. So once you've set your mic and your auxiliary audio input device as the output from voice meter banana then that's that's us we're happy to, to go here we'll just okay this settings box and you can see i have my um my one input that comes in here as i speak it comes through here if we put mike's music back on if we want to turn that down we just turn the input down and you can see the sliders down lower. So we don't ever want to change, in voice meter banana, we don't ever want to change this output and turn this down. Well, that was really, it was too quiet now. If we change this, if we change B2, that'll mean the input that comes into to OBS will be too low. And we don't want to do that. You also don't want to turn down the volume in OBS. You want to keep that 100%. There is the potential here, if if things are really quiet, I noticed um, initially when I when I started streaming that things were pretty quiet with the uh, the old USB mic that I had. So I had to actually add gain here, add the, the filter and added on some, here we go, I added on some gain. And that's something that you can set here, you can set it up and it's not, not required now. Um, so I, I don't, it's not something that I advise doing if you can avoid it. You don't want to have, you don't want to have too many um, fake gains because it will cause more distortion as time goes on. But, um, but yeah, so that's us. If we want to, if we had the game playing in the background just now, we could increase the volume of the, the game. So you, you've got various levels of things that you can do, but you want to control as much of that through your system here. And you want to make sure that the um, you want to make sure that you do all your volume mixing within Voice Meter Banana, and then just having one output going to to your actual output and so, uh, your your actual broadcasting software, which is contained here. Again, you can add some more gain here if you needed to, if we needed to make this louder going into to everything. But you want to have as many things set to zero as possible. You definitely do not want to ever hit the red. If you ever hit the red here, you see how that's sitting red? That's clipping. So we don't want to do that. We want to avoid, avoid that at all costs, just to make sure that we don't ever um, clip the, the stream and the sound that's going out. So that's us. So we now have our, um, we have our broadcast. We've got voice meter set up. We've got our broadcast so software set up. And that's us. We would literally just press start recording and we're good to go. So I will um, pause this music again and we can uh, we can see the voice will drop. So yeah, that's us. Happy days. And we will um I will clean everything up and we will uh we'll be good from there. Thank you.